Hi there, everyone. Uh, I think it's about time uh, we can start. So yeah, please come in and, and take a seat if you'd like to see this session. Um, welcome, everybody, to uh, Information Architecture for Site Builders. My name's uh, Murray Woodman, and I've been working with Drupal for about four years now. I've, I've spent a lot of my time as a site builder, but I also do my fair share of uh, module development as well. Uh, in a former lifetime, I um, have has been involved with uh, the semantic web and, and with technologies such as RDF and topic maps. And uh, I've got a, an, an interest in uh, sort of data modeling and, and basically the, the patterns around um, data. So what I want to do today is uh, you know, introduce you guys to a, a few concepts, a few sort of diagrams and, and graphs, and basically ways of thinking about um, the objects you have in your system and how you can then best represent that uh, in the site uh, building uh, experience. So we're not really going to be going sort of deep into any particular um, module or code, but what we'll be doing is, is largely having a look at da data structures and how we can uh, sort of use those ideas to, to build out our sites. If we have a look at the, uh, the three circles of information uh, architecture, just to, just to start off proceedings, um, every site you build is, is deployed um, with a certain context in mind, and that includes things such as the, the business goals and what you want to achieve with the site. You also have uh, users in the, the mix and the, the things you want the, your users to be able to achieve, the paths you want them to take throughout the site, and the goals, the actions you want them to take. And underpinning all of this, we have uh, content, and, and that is you know, how much content is there, what is the nature of this content, how much does it change? And basically, how are you going to manage and structure that? And that's what I'm going to be talking about today, basically how we can um, build out the structure of this content uh, in the site building uh, content context. So when you sit down to, to build out a Drupal site, uh, you know, it is a creative process working out how you're going to be modeling your entities and uh, fields and, and whatnot. And in that sort of design process where you're working out how to structure your content, you bring to the fore um, these various patterns that I'm going to talk about today. And then during the site building process, of course, that's when sort of the data model actually becomes apparent in uh, the underlying structures of Drupal. So the four patterns I, I want to talk about today is, is firstly aspects, and that is um, dividing out the horizontal and vertical um, components within your website. Uh, secondly, I'd, I'd like to talk about types and how you can have sort of multi-typed objects and how you can best represent that uh, within your website. And relationships is a, another big one. There's a, a couple of modules such as uh, entity reference and the relation module. They've both got their pros and cons and we'll be looking at how you can build out um, data structures using those. And finally, we have uh, faceted classification and for me that's where the, the rubber hits the road where you have um, these sort of structures being reflected in uh, search interfaces and, and things like that. So moving on to the, the first part of the, the talk, aspects. Here we can see a lovely picture of um, some cake, some vertical slices through with some horizontal structures in there. When, when you're solving problems, one of the, the concepts that uh, is in computer science is basically um, decomposing a problem according to separation of concerns by focusing one's attention on a single aspect. So instead of having a massive problem and trying to solve that problem in one go, you break it down into different parts, come up with simple solutions, and then have those solutions apply across other areas of the site. If we have a look at Drupal and, and the way it's structured, we can see that there's you know, a whole mass of um, these horizontal cross-cutting um, aspects, if you like, uh, to the system. So Drupal is sort of made up of you know, a number of these layers that are independent but operate uh, together. So this really isn't so much of a concern for site builders, but it's, it's a good thing to keep in mind, and we can apply these principles when we're building out our site. So what's the secret of Drupal's success? Well, I think we've probably all got our own uh, ideas with this, but for me, I think a large secret um, part of the, the secret is that the core and contrib modules are largely concerned with these horizontal aspects. That is, the, the solutions that uh, you know, contrib modules throw up often are there to apply across all the different content types that you have. So all of our you know, favorite sort of um, parts of Drupal and uh, these 
sort of contrib modules are all concerned with these horizontal aspects. However, when we're acting as site builders, we are solving specific problems for, uh, for our uh, clients. So we tend to just sit down and crack out the, uh, you know, create some new content types and we solve those problems by, you know, building out our content types. However, what I really want to emphasize is that we probably should be thinking about some of these horizontal aspects as well. So we should be trying to get reuse out of fields, out of taxonomy terms and, and vocabularies as well about thinking about presentation and metadata because all of these things are, are horizontal concerns. So if, if we have a look at the kind of process we go through when we're, we're building out content types, we, I've got a few examples here of page, article, place and event. We can see that, immediately see that a lot of these horizontal concerns are actually sort of the dominating um, thing. For example, thumbnails and descriptions, uh, the image styles that we get reuse with, the view modes that can operate across the site and you know vocabularies of course all these things are horizontal so um, I'm just suggesting sit down and, and think about these concerns before you, you crack out and getting stuck into your vertical aspects the vertical aspects we can see here are, are things such as you know the author um, and uh, the event location and, and date and things like that but these things really are the minority when it comes to, to building out your content types so just coming down to a, a few little quick tips, um, thinking about these horizontal concerns. Basically, if, if you have um, fields that are semantically the same across your various content types, just call them the same thing. Don't namespace them with uh, the content type. Um, that way you've got a, a, a common index, and that's going to be very helpful for when you're using views, filtering on that, sorting on that, as well as when you're um, sort of using uh, search interfaces as well. So if we, we have a look at these, uh, these fields, I think Jeff Eaton calls this the concept of uh, chunking information uh, across your, your content types. And this is basically a, a similar idea where you, you're getting reuse. Another really interesting uh, horizontal sort of pattern I've, I've run into is with um, various view modes and uh, how you can use those across the site. So if you say every single one of my content types must implement these, say, three or four view modes, you are guaranteed of being able to render those things out consistently across your whole site. So when you're using views, you don't have to you know, break down and, and sort of start using fields. You can reliably use um, rendered entities and, and view modes to, uh, to get that consistency. And so once you do this, uh, you know, it really frees you up to build interfaces that are going to be um, very consistent. And it's going to be quite easy to add new content types in and, and not really have to worry so much about the presentation. If, um, if you're interested in this, I thoroughly recommend checking out you know, the Display Suite uh, module, which allows you to, to customize uh, your view modes. Metadata is a, a pretty obvious cross-cutting one, but I, I'd just like to draw attention to um, the Open Graph standard and, and schema.org. Schema.org is uh, a consortium of um, uh, Yahoo, Bing, and um, Google, and they've sort of come up with a bunch of schemas on um, the web. And both of these uh, standards are sort of just fo focusing on name, description, image, and URL to um, describe resources. So I would recommend thoroughly, you know, making sure all of your content types have a description and an image so, th so that's working consistently across your content types. Now, all these horizontal aspects that we've been talking about uh, are reflected in the way you build out your features. O originally, when I suppose the, the concept of features was mooted, at least this is the way I thought of them, they would be sort of little silos of, of functionality and configuration that you could drop into your website. But, um, you know, reality is a lot more complex than that and they've got to, features when you use them, have to sort of contend with all these, these horizontal uh, concerns. So I think when you're just trying to plan your website and, and these various structures, you've got to sort of think about how they're going to be reflected in your features. So, you know, one of the the basic patterns I use is to, you know, have, uh, have a feature for each content type and then maybe your vocabularies which are, are cross-cutting are then used as dependencies and then you're getting uh, reuse across your, your image styles and, and view modes as well. Another interesting one is roles. Roles is, is a pretty sort of curly thing. That, that's going to be set different for every website you do, but that is a cross-cutting thing that works across your permissions and, and your text formats. So one of the, the patterns I've used there is to you know, just have a little feature for your roles and then that becomes a, 
a dependency for, for these other components. What I've got here is not necessarily going to work for you, but I'm just trying to, to get you guys thinking along, along the lines of how you can design this thing, these things out without um, sort of running into sort of dependency problems. So yeah, takeaway for this section is, you know, let's plan for the horizontal. It's uh, good for two reasons. It's great for you as site builders because you're going to be able to be building more simple flex systems that are going to be more flexible and ultimately they're going to be more expandable uh, in the future because it's much easier to drop in vertical components once you've got all the horizontal stuff sorted. In terms of information architecture for users, it's, it's great for them as well. They, they're getting consistent interfaces and having to um, think about sort of the structure of your site in a consistent way. And that's going to make, make things more predictable and understandable for them. All right, the next stage. It's a young Bob Dylan. Um, Bob's a very talented um, man with, with many different facets and we'll be using him uh, as an example for this next section. Uh, what is a type? It's, it's a fairly um, simple definition. A, a type is just a category of things with common characteristics. Uh, and in Drupal, of course, that means uh, entities with fields. If we sort of have a look at how PHP sort of does things, we can see that uh, any one class, which represents a type, can only ever extend uh, a single class. Uh, there are ways to get around that through things such as interfaces. Uh, and the example I've got here is you can see a theme can, and a developer can uh, implement, well, the class person can implement theme and developer. So it is possible to get more types in on that person class, but you still have that basic idea of single inheritance. And uh, Drupal is, is very uh, similar. Um, we can see that we can have multiple entity types, and the one I've got here is a, a node. You can see that uh, there are several bundles that any um, content type can support, article, page, and event, for example. But an event can only ever be, uh, a, can only ever support a single type. So an event cannot be an article on a page. And this is it's a little bit limiting because, you know, we've only sort of got these single faceted uh, sort of nodes. Out on the web, things are a lot more complicated. And in real life, things are a lot more complicated. People um, perform many different roles in their lives. They have many different facets. And so, for example, Bob Dylan, he's a, a singer, a songwriter, and an author. Freebase is a... As a um, is a site on the web that is a massive semantic um, database of pretty much everything in the world. And the way that they get around this is by giving each of their content types a different facet or a different set of properties. So we can see, say, Bob Dylan in the Freebase view of the world uh, is, a song, is not only a person, he's a songwriter, a composer, an artist, and, and a book author. Over at, at schema.org and with the, the schemas they've built out, they've, they've got a type hierarchy, but each one of their um, sort of classes in their system also support this multiple inheritance sort of approach. So we have uh, a hospital, is not just a hospital, it is actually a, a civic structure, a local business, an organization, a place, as, as well as being a thing. And it's this compositional approach to objects that we can move across and, and use this in Drupal. And there are three main ways I see of being able to do this. Um, that's called uh, reusing fields, um, using a field collection, or perhaps linking in another object uh, with an entity reference. Each of these three approaches I'm going to describe um, sort of follow, have a fairly similar UI, which you can see there. Basically, um, the edit form of, of the node or the, the content is adorned with these extra fields. So in the case of just reusing fields, it's, it's very simple, quite obvious. It's just a case of plugging those extra fields into the content type. And just by adding these extra fields in, you can sort of be just extending your, your objects out with these different types. So that is the most lightweight way, and it's, it's probably a, a, a thing that we all do naturally without thinking about it. A second approach would be to, to use a field collection. And this is where you have an entity that is just a collection of fields. And then you can plug that into the uh, subject by embedding that uh, field collection in. So if you haven't checked out the field collection, it's, it's a really handy way of, of um, building out objects with, with just a collection of fields. The other really cool thing about this is that because it's an entity, you're also getting your view modes um, associated with that. 
and it's possible to, to plug in different displays for, for this field collection. And so you're going to be getting reuse across that if you're reusing that field collection. Um, I don't really recommend this approach. I think it's a little bit uh, sort of heavy to be using another, um, sort of throwing another entity uh, into the mix. If we have a look at uh, the third approach, and that is with uh, entity reference, I think this is a more of an interesting model because not only are we plugging in um, the extra fields through an entity, but we're also getting the, the goodness of um, business logic and the view modes that can be associated with that entity. So uh, like the classic example of this in Drupal is, say, with the commerce module, where you have um, a product and then you have a display product um, node, and that product is linked in with an entity reference field. So you're getting the, the, the fields and you're also getting all the business logic. So if, if you want to sort of have this multi-typed approach with, with logic, um, the entity reference module is a, certainly a cool way to do it. The inline uh, entity form is uh, also a nice way to, to plug this stuff in uh, into the, the UI when editing. So yeah, the, the takeaways here is that Drupal is a flexible system. It, it is possible to get over this single inheritance uh, sort of limitation by, by mixing in um, these different types. Uh, using shared fields is perhaps the, the easiest way and uh, entity reference is, is the most powerful if you want to be um, building in some logic as well. Okay, third section. Kevin Bacon, can anyone guess why I've got him up here on the screen? Yes. Yeah, it's the six degrees, it's Kevin Bacon. I've got to get a bit of audience participation here. I don't want to see too many people going off to sleep. But uh, yeah, this is a cool part of the talk. Um, Kevin Bacon, relationships, um, that, that game is, is about um, trying to link up different actors in Hollywood according to the, the movies that they've, uh, they've been in. Uh, and for information architects, it's, it's a really important uh, thing to do is to, to relate um, content uh, in interesting ways because it's basically the thing that's going to be providing the navigation paths your users take throughout your system. And the better those paths, the more chance they've got of discovering interesting information. The, the basic foundational concept I'm going to be talking about here is um, a triple. And this kind of idea is, is found in RDF, but it's also got uh, it's analog in Drupal with um, you know, fields hanging off uh, entities. I want to talk about something a little bit more complex than that, and that is the, the concept of entry relations. And that's where you have a number of different entities sort of orchestrated together to, to come up with another entity that, that stands for something as a whole. The example I'm going to use is the one used by the relation module. If you, if you go to the home page of the relation module, you'll see they've got an example of a donation where company A donates to party B via bank C a certain amount. So what we want to do is we want to somehow represent the, these relationships in the most succinct way. I mentioned uh, at the start of the talk that um, sort of in the early 2000s, I was involved with the, the topic maps uh, community and that was a, a specification that sort of modeled a lot of these um, relationships and, and one of the first class objects in that system was the concept of an association and an association allowed you to sort of relate several different um, objects together and in this case we, we have the company, the party and the bank and you can see each one of these relationships uh, is, is, a, is an edge on, a, on the graph that's, that's labeled. And uh, the cool thing about topic maps was that you could plug in any number of these um, sort of objects that were joined. It wasn't just a binary relationship. You could have entry relationships where you were relating a lot of things. In the uh, RDF world, uh, we have a very similar sort of structure as well, although this has been done by sort of building things up. Um, so we come up with the concept of a, a resource, which is the, the center point. And then each one of these triples is then built out to, uh, to represent this entry um, relation. So you can see that if we just go back to topic map and then go forward, they're both pretty much the same kind of structure. And if we come across the Drupal, you can see we can model this in exactly the same way using entity re reference. So um, we can come up with a, an entity such as uh, a donation. That could be a node or a bean or a field collection or any other entity you want to create. 
And just by using uh, entity references, you're able to, to build up a structure that is, is very similar to the, the two we've seen. Looking at the way the relation module does it, the relation module um, is meant to sort of model uh, this kind of thing as well. And you can see the relation model <laughs> module introduces two um, sort of relation entities here. So you can see this structure is a little bit more complicated. And that's because it's basically joining only sort of two things at, at once. If we dig a little bit deeper into the database, we can see that the relation module is um, using endpoints as the name of the field. Um, rather than sort of semantically named, um, semantically named fields. So you can see this structure is just a little bit more complicated than uh, the entity reference approach. And um, I, I suppose the, the main, my main idea here is that I think entity reference is a better way to model these uh, entity relationships. It's a simpler model, it's much more flexible, and it reflects um, the resource-centric approach that we have on the web. So for instance, if you want to implement uh, link, a linked data strategy or you wanted to have a, a RESTful web service, you're actually just talking about a single resource that can be, can be used in those approaches. So um, yeah, I really like the way Entity Reference tackles this stuff. Moving on to some other relationships that you can, you can have. Um, I'm just going to look at sort of reverse links here. So you've seen subject, object, and predicate. Let's throw in the, the reverse link and, and talk about the link going back the other way. For example, with the example of uh, Hillary and Chelsea, we can see that Hillary has a child called Chelsea and Chelsea has a, has a parent called Hillary. So the reverse link there is an inverse of um, link. And another sort of exam, more specialized example of that is the friend of relationship where the reverse link is named the same thing as the, the forward relationship. Uh, and that's called a symmetric property. Um, in Drupal, it's actually quite a difficult thing to map that reverse link back. There's no sort of natural ways of, of doing a reverse link in, um, <laughs> in Drupal, but there are ways to work around it. Um, I'll just go back there. The relation model module handles this explicitly by having the, the forward and, and back links, but if you decide to go with the uh, entity reference approach, you can use another module called the, the Corresponding Entity References module, which allows you to manage that backlink. And you can just see there on the, the configuration screen, you can see I've just basically mapped a forward link to a, a backlink. And then once you do that, this module will keep both of those links in sync. So to have a look at Bill and Monica, if Bill is no longer friends with Monica, then the Corresponding Entity References module will make sure that Monica is no longer friends with Bill. So you can see you've kind of got a bit of replication of data there, but it's, uh, this, this module will keep those two things in sync. And I actually quite like this approach because once again, it's, it's, it reflects kind of the RDF sort of view of the world where you've just kind of got these small little pieces and, and uh, you're coordinating them. Uh, collections, this one's pretty trivial. I don't really have to talk about this, but um, because it's probably a, a pattern that you're, you're using very frequently. Um, you can use the entity reference module just to, with say unlimited numbers of uh, nodes or whatever you want to link to, to build out um, various uh, collections. So here both Earl and Lynette are, are both authors. So yeah, that's a pretty simple um, relationship to model. Uh, this is a really interesting one. I find this interesting. When I, when I was looking at the relation module when it came out, there's a lot of excitement about it. And I really wanted to work out what was what was going on with it, especially with this um, symmetric um, relation that it, it uh, modeled. If you go to the, the home page there, you'll see there's the siblings relationship that, that you can model. And in this example, we've got Courtney, Kim, Chloe, and Rob, who are all siblings. And uh, the thing with the relation module, what it says is that this particular relationship joins things in all directions. So each one of these siblings is related to the other one. And this is, a, this is quite an interesting thing because the way this um, structure is represented inside Drupal, it kind of looks a little bit like a collection to me. You know, you, you've got these endpoints with, with various deltas. But the arcs are really not related to the relation entity. All the relationships are going on with the things, with the, with the actual siblings. And this is quite a bit of a, a mind-bending thing for me to, to get around because what the relation module is really modeling this it's not looking something like that as it appears in the database. 
And that's because like the relation module is, is basically managing its own layer of, of metadata to, to map these various endpoints. So yeah, the relation module, it does have a good use case here because this is a, like just a shorthand and notation for relating a whole collection of things together. But I would say it's quite maybe an unusual thing to, to want to model, but it's certainly uh, you know, a, an efficient way to, uh, to do it. Okay, conclusions about relationships. You can see I'm a big fan of entity reference. I think it's simple, it's flexible, and it follows the, the basic understood field semantics within side, side Drupal. It also follows a resource-centric approach, and that makes it very sort of web-ready for, for RESTful web services and, and just basically when you want to deal with a, a single entity. Um, the relation module has, has made some good steps in trying to um, be explicit about the nature of the relationships it, it wants to model. Um, but uh, overall, I think the simplicity of the entity reference module is, is, um, is probably a winner. Although w with the, uh, the shorthand for those symmetric relationships, that could be a, a use case for you. Phew. Okay, so that's, that's the relationships it's dealt with. And we're moving on to the final section now. And that's uh, to do with faceted classification. And I've, I've got this last because I think it's really where the rubber hits the road. A lot of the hard work you've done with modeling your data, I think it's reflected in, in how you can build out facets to, to search across your website. Um, as information architects, we're all no doubt familiar with hierarchy. It's, it's quite a, a simple um, sort of concept to grasp, that of, of a tree structure with, with broader and narrower um, categories. And it works particularly well when you have um, type and subtype relationships, whole and part containment relationships, as well as class and instance where you may have a list of things that are instances of a particular class. But hierarchy is not great for everything. Um, say for example with the, the Dewey Decimal System, we can see how difficult it is to, to slot a book into a single slot in, into that system. It's also very difficult to come up with a classification system that's going to apply and make sense to every uh, everyone sort of using that system. On the web, we've had um, DMOZ, the Open Directory Project, and Yahoo. They've both flourished and, and fallen away as sort of alternative um, navigation and searching um, methods have arisen. So we've seen the, the rise of um, tagging and folksonomy, uh, the rise of search and, and using labels instead of nested folders, as well as faceted search and, and self-organizing interfaces. So what is faceted classification? Well, it's, it's basically where you divide up a set of content into various dimensions, and that is using multiple characteristics that can be applied to every single member of that set of, of um, whatever you're looking at. So instead of using a, a single predetermined um, hierarchy, we're actually using sort of um, properties that are intrinsic to those, those objects that you're looking at. And this brings a lot of advantages. So, I know it's a, a funny example, but it's the way it, way it worked out in the end. I'm searching for a blonde woman, but I don't know her name. Now, stop smiling, John. <laughs> if, I, if I didn't know the name of that person, it would be a very difficult thing to search for because I don't know the magic string um, to, to enter into the search engine. But using facets, it's possible to, to, you know, to narrow down, down the field to find um, the object you're looking for. So using the, this guess who name, we can apply the facets to, to find out um, who, who the person is I'm looking for. So this is everyone. This is me filtering by the um, gender facet. Um, and so we're just selecting all the women here. And this is me searching by the, the hair color facet for blonde women. And, and lo and behold, we've got Anita. And this is the basic principle that, that can be used with facets. So it can be used in conjunction with search, or it can just be used on its own. And it's very good for slicing and dicing up large data sets that, um, that are difficult to search. Um, using facets is cool because it, you know, we can be a little bit more rigorous about the way we want to define our facets. Each of the, uh, the terms should, not be, um, should be mutually exclusive. That is, they, they shouldn't intersect at all. And when you add up all of the terms, they should be collectively exhaustive and cover the whole field. And so once you've done that, you're kind of doing a bit of a mathematical sort of, um, sort of uh, intersection when, when you are sort of dividing these sets up. And you're going to have more efficient use of, of your facets if you organize things like this. 
A little design tip I've got would be not to be aware of sort of big, big aggregates of things which sort of mix and match stuff that's, that's not the same. So for example, in this case, do away with this hierarchy and, and break it out into these two, two different facets and you're going to be getting uh, much better reuse from, from your faceted search. What kind of stuff is, makes good for good candidates um, for facets in Drupal? It's um, all of the horizontal things that we've been talking about. So this is you know, where your sort of information design at the start of the talk um, <coughs> comes to fruition here. You know, we've got types, categories and tags, authors, languages, um, and even sort of locations can be used to, to, um, to use for facets. You might have the main specific things such as you know, t-shirt size or t-shirt color, and you know, they make very good um, things for, for this kind of thing as well. Um, this is not a particularly new idea in, in Drupal. I mean, you guys are probably all familiar with, with Solar, but most of these uh, recipes around um, faceted search revolve around the Solar search engine because it's very good at returning um, rows from large data sets where you're searching on different um, columns. Um, typical MySQL search is not so good on that because it, it can't sort of index across, um, have multiple indexes on tables. So, that's why the Apache Solar search engine is great. The Facet API module in conjunction with the, the search API module or Apache Solar will, will basically uh, combine to, to provide you um, the interfaces you're after. So just wrapping up here, uh, users turn to search more frequently um, and you have the faceted search that you can provide them is a way to, to bring all these horizontal concerns to the fore and to provide them with um, you know, an interesting uh, and effective search interface. So, yeah, time to, time to wrap up here. Um, I've had a look at a, a few patterns here today. Um, aspects, types, relationships and facets. And the, one of the, the main things I really wanted to get across was just, yeah, this concept of the, the horizontal. Don't just focus on, on the vertical um, things. Um, building out these, this kind of stuff will lead to, to better interfaces for your users. One of the reason, main reasons behind the talk today was just to um, try to bring some sort of data modeling concepts uh, into Drupal so that you know, us as site builders can um, you know, be able to, to build out these structures more effectively. If any of you guys have got any sort of other ideas or, or thoughts of how you would like to uh, to integrate other data structures and how we build out Drupal. I'd love to hear about them uh, in the, uh, the question section at the end because you know, I think the more ideas we can get coming into Drupal for this kind of stuff, um, the better. Just coming back to the, the start of the talk, I've focused a, a lot today on uh, the content, but please don't just focus on that. It, it must be done um, within the context of, of what you want to achieve with the site and the, the things you want your users to do. So if you bring all of those together, you know, hopefully your, your information architecture should be improved. And uh, that's it. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs>
Yes. Yeah. 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 On on the relation homepage, yeah, they address address the strengths of the relation module versus the entity reference thing. That's that's one of them, linking to other um, entity types as as well as apparently entity references can't be um, versioned as well. And that's that's one thing that they're they they do not want to um, sort of add in. So there are some shortcomings there. But that shortcoming you talk about is is also something that is um, very similar with, with search as well and, and solar. You can only sort of chuck in uh, you only have an index into a certain entity type. So, yeah, gen generally, you know, I mean, I, I'm quite a fan of nodes and I'm quite happy to build out stuff as content types for, you know, for those reasons because you, you don't run into those problems all, and especially with the search. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's noted. That is, a, is certainly a shortcoming there. Yeah, behind you. Yes. And so you can't gloss over it. You can't say, well, you know, I, I prefer to use the sheet reference. Yes. Um, but I wasn't clear on why you prefer the sheet reference over the field collection. Okay. So yeah, the question was, um, why did I choose entity reference over field collections? I I I really like field collections mainly because they're they're very good to use when you have sort of lots of them, and you know you want to represent a collection of things, and you just want to quickly model them out. So. You could just have, uh, you know, you could come up with the, the person field collection and then just have a collection of people and, you know, you just, so that's very good when you have multiple things because it's, it's like a little container um, where you can just sort of slot all those uh, field collections in. However, when the use case I'm talking about here was just for typing, really. So we were just going to be importing those fields in once. So if you have a, a field collection and then you're just pulling those fields in, it's just like, it's just a little bit heavier, you know. You've, you've got another entity in there, and so when you're doing a views query, you're going to have to go from your node to the, the field collection and then sort on the fields, right? So you just got another join in the, the thing. So I mean, you know, it's, it's just a small thing, but you know, if you don't, if you don't want to do that, then then probably just going the lighter weight way with the fields would be a way to do it. Yes, that's that's yeah yeah. If you use entity reference, yes, um, yeah, th th that's very that's very true. Yeah, that node is going to be uh, that will be heavier. So I mean, the most lightweight way is just to do fields, and then you don't have to have to have any anything in. So yeah, I mean, it's just you, you just pick which whichever one you know best best suits what you want to do. That's right. Yeah. Okay, down the front here, Vladimir. Uh, you mentioned features um, and you mentioned how to structure the process. Yes. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, basically, how, how do you model features? Um, do you use sort of big units or, or small units? I mean, we could probably talk for hours um, about this. Um, you guys might know of Justin Randall um, Bajibas. He's been working on the configuration management initiative. And, you know, his idea is that, you know, all of this stuff, the whole site gets chucked into one massive big tree and, and stored as configuration, and that's just done in one chunk. I'm probably much more of a, a smaller chunk person where each feature does have a little bit more reusability where it's um, sort of s split out. So that's why I've sort of designed these along sort of content type kind of lines and then sort of dealt with the, the cross-cutting concerns when required. However, if, if you're building a site out for a client and you don't really need to have any reuse, there's, there's no reason why you can't chuck all of this stuff into the content type, so that would include you know your permissions as well, and and you know maybe some other things. You can just basically throw everything in because it is a unit of encapsulation. But other systems I've seen, you may have um, sort of layout um, features where you may be using context and, and other things to to map these things in. So you can have a whole section of layout features, for example, where they're, they're cross cutting sort of concerns as as well. So it really depends on the kind of site you're building and if you want to get the reuse out of uh, the features that you you're, you're building. Yep, it's up there. I have a quick question. Do you go through the build side or just the build side and actually do the layout and work it out and actually then build the content and then build the layout? 
that? How do, how do you get buy-in from um, the client and on how you're structuring this stuff? I, I personally think at the end of the day, you know, as, a, as an architect or whatever, this is, you know, this is the expertise you're bringing to the field and you know, you've, you've got to make the best um, decisions. Of course, they're going to have trade-offs along the way and, and sometimes you know, there might be line ball cases where you don't know if something should be an entity or, an, or a, a content type or, or, or something else. And, I suppose then you might go back to the client and, and discuss, can you see any future requirements around these things? Sometimes it's good to know what's coming down the road to see if you can make those design decisions up front, you can make better um, decisions then. But, but generally speaking, I'd say it's the ball's in your court when you're, you're modeling the data. Yes, yes, I, th I think that, that is helpful for clients to, especially when you're specking out um, depending on how you work with Waterfall or Agile, but I, th I think it is very handy for clients to be able to see those, those basic moving parts and they can be alerted to any sort of shortfalls in, in the fields or, or whatever you're discussing. So I think that is, can be a, you know, a helpful thing to, to walk through the, the, with the client when you're, when you're mapping out what their requirements are. Yep. Any other, oh, yep, Maddo? Yes, well, I mean, with, with, if you're just chucking fields on, hey, we, we do it all the time. Let's say we've got a, a thumbnail field. Just push, you put the thumbnail field on and you use it across the thing, across all your content types. That's, that's pretty much what I'm talking about. So you get the reuse that way, but when you're implementing the presentational layer, you're still going to have to, say, if you're using Display Suite, you're still going to have to go in and configure that, that one up manually. So you're getting reuse with the field, but you've still got to re-implement some of those display things or in your template layer, for example. But um, you know, that's the most simple, sort of lightweight, common way and probably the most natural way of, of doing it in, in Drupal. Yep. You could, yeah, you could. I was, <laughs> believe it or not, I was thinking about this on the bus the, on the way here this morning. Um, if you're just going to do it, just having you know objects and and entity references between them, it would be a very hard thing to do because you would have to have, you know, each of those siblings going like that, and then the next one would have to be related to everyone. So that is a very laborious way of doing things. But you could have, you could come up with um, another entity type, maybe called. Um, Si you know, siblings, right? <laughs> and then um, you, you know, you could basically have a collection. So you could just have sibling um, field that's unlimited, and then you could just chuck them all in there. And you could even give it a title and call it the Kardashian clan or something like that. And so then that's an entity in itself. And uh, but the each of the each of the um, each of the uh, to to get things semantically correct, each of those fields is a relationship between each member and the actual entity itself, that's the correct way. It's not an in-between thing. So it, I know we're splitting hairs here, but each one of these guys is gonna be a member of this, the, the Kardashian clan entity. So that's a, that's a bit more of a complicated way of, of doing it. It's not so natural. You've gotta go away and build that structure and, and then maintain it. But that may make sense, but if you're just having a lightweight, you know, trying to relate these things, then, then maybe the relation module is the way to go. But yeah, go ahead. I haven't, I you know, I, I haven't done any performance things, but there's there are less moving parts in the entity reference one. Certain, certainly for that donation example I gave you, you've got one less entity type there. Okay, so if in the relation module you'd have, in the relation module you'd have to have two relation entities. If you wanted to add another thing, another a link to another thing, maybe um, I don't know. Just say there was, um, you know. Uh, a lawyer consulted and you want to plug that lawyer into that relationship, you're going to have to map another entity, as far as I understand, another relation entity in. So it's not really a scalable solution because you're just making more and more, as far as I understand, more and more relation entities to get this more complex structure. Whereas the, the relate entity reference module 
It's just going to be, uh, you know, just have one entity in the middle and these things hanging off. So that's a simpler structure, I think, and it'll be more efficient to navigate that graph with, with views and, and things like that. But in terms of querying and, and displaying this stuff on, on the page, I'm, I'm not really sure how that, that works. But I think the entity reference module could get a few more smarts. There could be some more contrib modules to handle this kind of stuff with the presentation of this stuff. Maybe a field formatter can work out, oh, look, this page is about Kim. I'm not going to show Kim in this list of things. You, you know, you just show the other siblings. Maybe there are certain ways of, of working around that. But the, yeah, the entity reference module is pretty, it doesn't have any smarts about what it's, you have to sort of augment that with other uh, modules. I just, yeah, just up the, up the back there. Uh, it, it could well be. You could decide to call your content type, you know, something slightly more generic, and that's an optional field. And if that works for you, that's that's cool. So I'll just restate the question: What what do you do with uh, content types which kind of have optional fields where you're split between making up two different uh, content types? <coughs> Is there an objective criteria? Uh, that I mean. They're, they're just decisions. They're just decisions you make. You know, I, I'll just do a little throwback to um, say relational databases and, and how you represent these sort of um, different types. You know, there's there's three ways, if if I remember correctly. There's the one way of having a super wide table with all of the properties from all the different um, types. The second way is to have a separate table for every type, and the third way is to have a, a, a basic superclass table and then subtables for all the subtypes, right? So you, even in relational databases, there's three ways to model this exact thing. And in Drupal, you're facing the, the same problems where you've got, you know, you're basically deciding. At the end of the day, I think it's a practical thing. And oftentimes, it comes down to what do the content editors expect, you know? Do they want to go in and say, I want to create a new event or a new whatever? Sometimes you can divide a site up like that to make it sort of logical for them, you know, a natural thing for them to do. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it just depends. I know that's not a, a very good answer, but it just depends, really. Um, on, on that point, I just would say that we, we really need to have a hierarchy in between our, our, our entity types. We need to have inheritance between our entity types. Can, and can you sort of flesh that out a bit more, um, Jonathan? So Yes, yes, that would be awesome. And when I first heard of bundles, I thought, oh, wow, this is cool. We're going to get like these interface kind of things on entities. And, and then I realized, no, it's not. It's that single inheritance thing. So yeah, that's what I'm kind of driving at is how can we, we do that. And you're saying you would like to have a bit more of a formalized structure for what these inheritance things could be. But that's basically what this inline uh, entity uh, editing module does. You know, you can, you can say, OK, this is an entity reference and, you know, just plug it in here, and so you, you know you're kind of building it, building it out in the content type still, but it's yeah, it's just not an explicit concept in, in Drupal core. Yeah, over there. Do I know any modules for graphing out these relationships? For visualizing. You can probably tell from my body language that I don't. Um, <laughs> does, 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 any, does anyone else know a ways to visualize this thing? Yeah. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, I know what you're saying. I'm, I'm not actually, you know, aware of it. I've, I've got to say. In the what the relation module? Sorry. Oh, the, re what, the relation database model you're talking about, or the relation module? All yeah. oh, right, yeah, I'm, well, I'm not entirely sure. I've been using a lot the uh, visual reference because it's easier to get uh, web traffic on top of the uh, keyword, whatever it is. 
Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't know. Uh, w when I was doing this talk, actually, I, I, was, I had to work out a way to um, to map out uh, come on, computer to map out these various relationships. And I came across this GraphViz open source um, project, which where you can sort of just um, do a text file, and then it will uh, um, render out these. Uh, render out these um, things. So I don't know, maybe you could write a little module just to, to go through the, the various sort of entity sort of definitions and, and pump out a text file and do it. But yeah, I don't know apart from that. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's really the fact that this is a relation model. Yep. Yep. Ah, oh, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't checked that that aspect of it out, but yeah, there must be little connectors to, to visualizing things. And yeah, I, I don't think that would be hard to uh, to build something like that. Yeah, it's just a matter of yeah, of, of putting that together. But yeah, I, I don't know is the answer. Anyone else? Yes. All oh, right. Okay. So in Drupal six, there was node relationships module. Yep. Anyone else? Has anyone got any patterns or anything? Any sort of other ideas that we can throw into the mix? I, I basically went through the OWL, the web ontology language specification, and, and had a look at the various properties in there and, and worked out how they could map into Drupal. Has, has anyone got any other cool things? Yes. Yep. Yes, yeah, it is. It's it's pretty yeah. So uh, our terms and taxonomy reference the same. Yes, it, it pretty much is. You know, it's it's just that that exact um, relationship. And just in terms of the trade-offs between say content and um, taxonomy terms, I, I think the for the main advantage is that terms have this concept of a hierarchy built in. So when you're building out your vocabulary, you can add that nesting in. And for me, that's the main advantage of of terms over. Um, sort of nodes. I mean, they're probably a bit more lightweight as well, but that is the main feature that that you get out of them. So, if, if you want to support that hierarchy, yeah, go with go with terms. Oh, sorry, you both get the both so well. Yeah. We got the two technocrat boys down here fighting it out. <laughs> Come on. Uh, so did you mention the inline entity form? Yes, I did. Yep. Oh. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> that that um that got a bit of a um. A, I don't know what's going on there. Sorry, guys. But yeah, the um, the commerce guys have um, yeah, it's a bit of a snafu. The the commerce guys um, are, are really have been thought leaders and in, in this area with the entity reference and, and entities and the inline editing form. That's uh, that's down to them. And you know, I think that's a great step forward. And I think a lot of in the future we're going to get a lot of that pattern reappearing where you want logic and uh, and data sort of um, being able to plug into other objects. Well, it's, it's more of a hardcore thing. I mean, if, if you want to go away and write your own entity, feel free. Um, and then, you know, it takes a bit of effort and, and know-how. Um, the field collection module is, you know, much easier to, to get up and running with, obviously, because you're just building out the, the field. So, you know, if the field collection is going to do it for you. But other, other people I've spoken to just hate the field collection module because they don't like the concept of, you know, fields, and they'd much prefer to build out an, an entity with, with properties and have the database tables the, the way they want them, you know. So it just depends w what, how comfortable you are with, with, with on that spectrum. Yep. Yes. Yeah, that's good. So James has mentioned, yeah, traits and PHP. I'm not up up with those, but yeah, I'll have to research those, James. It's a good idea. Cool. Yeah, that's a good idea. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Well, that'd be an, that could be an interesting model, right? So you're not just getting fields; you're getting functionality going across your content types. You know, um, I suppose that's what the 
you know, the, the commerce guy's solution with the, the entity reference and the entity, because you, you are getting that functionality, I suppose, there in there as well. Well, I, I mean, the, the talk today, guys, I, I know it was maybe a little bit high level, um, is, but I, I hope you've sort of, you know, got a few little sort of ideas out there. So when, when you're sitting down in front of your computer and, and building out your content types, you can just have a few of these ideas bubbling around in, in the back of your head and, and maybe um, apply them. And, and hopefully, you know, as site builders, you're just going to have, um, you know, an easier experience there putting your sites together. Is that, I don't know how we are for time, Alistair? Four minutes. Oh, cool. Okay. Well, uh, three minutes more for, for questions. Anyone else? <laughs> I'm getting quite enjoying these questions. Anyone? <laughs> no? All right. One, one more. Yep. Yes. Yep. And um, can it be really easy for um, devs or for people to build a page and then they just kind of show up in the build page and they can uh, use that type code and then the extension to get to the name of the page there and then they can get a page with details and that sort of stuff. And then that will just spread through the user guide and then people can ask about it. So it's really natural for <coughs> the project to just be easy to follow. Right. Yeah, some people on the video, yeah, it was basically a quick question on that, you know, how do, how do you model things? You put a lot of properties into to one content type and, and just run with that and, and the response was, well, it's, it's probably best to, to split, split that out, certainly for, for things like metadata and, and typing that up for, for use on the web. Is entity referencing core in Drupal 8? I told you not to ask hard questions. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know the answer to that. Does anyone else know about Drupal 8? No. <laughs> no, I don't know, Jonathan. So, yeah. Anyone else? Okie dokie. I, th I think that wraps it up. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm so happy you all came along. Thank you.